Hello everyone and welcome back to Mr. and Mrs. Social Studies. We're continuing our back to school series and today we're talking about how to build a sense of community with your students in your classroom. And this is one of the most important topics because if you have a positive classroom community, not only will you enjoy being in your classroom a lot more and enjoy and find the job more fulfilling, but also your students will enjoy being in your classroom more and just have a much better overall experience. The other side effect of that that's very positive is that you'll also likely have fewer classroom management struggles. We will be talking about classroom management in the next video though, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on that. That being said, let's jump right into some classroom community building tips. The first important concept regarding building a positive classroom community comes from your classroom setup. You wanna make sure that your students feel respected, welcome, seen, like they matter in your classroom. And the classroom setup and classroom decor actually play a role in that. It's not just you know for your purposes, but also for theirs. It's really amazing if you can actually involve your students in something in the classroom. Maybe that's using an interactive bulletin board. Maybe that's displaying student work. Maybe it's taking pictures of students and posting those on the classroom wall or in a bulletin board with their consent, of course, and helping them feel like they're part of something. One thing that I enjoyed doing that was part of my travel themed classroom decor is that I had students color in flags based upon their heritage or ancestry, or if they didn't know much about that, they could also do like travel destinations that they'd like to go to, or maybe they have gone to in the past. And so it was a way to see those flags up on part of the wall uh, where they were not only made the room look good and added a lot of color but also students knew which ones they had made and got to see those reflected in the walls of the classroom. I have a link below if you're interested in that particular activity. Likewise the posters and classroom decor you're using can play a big role. If you have people pictured in any of your posters, are the people in the posters representative of the students in your classroom? If not, you may want to make some adjustments. And it doesn't have to just be people. One of the things, again, going back to that travel theme classroom decor, I have some skylines of the world posters I put up and I had a diverse group of students and I wanted to make sure that skylines were from around the world so students felt represented based upon their own personal heritage. And that was a way that students, again, it might be small, it might just be this one picture, but if they see a place that's connected to their heritage or to who they are, then it becomes more relevant to them. Likewise, you can even think about the state that you live in and if there are specific things you can do from the state or even the town that could be posted on your wall that makes it feel more relevant to the students. Going beyond classroom setup, let's look at then your curriculum. Does your curriculum help build a classroom community? Can they see themselves in what you're teaching or is what you're teaching accessible to them? Obviously, these answers are going to vary a lot depending upon your grade level, content area, the school you teach in, so many different factors, but it's important to reflect about these and specifically coming from a social studies or history teaching perspective, it was something I cared a lot about trying to make what we were teaching more relevant to students and not necessarily just thinking about engagement, although that is a, a priority as well, but thinking about, okay, if this is the topic I'm teaching, Obviously, I can't change the content itself, but how can I approach it? Or what tidbits and components can I include so that it feels more relevant to my students? And when we ask those questions while we're planning, we're going to have a much more inclusive unit as well as I think just be better teachers because we are trying to not only meet the academic needs of our students, but also again, making them feel welcome and a part of the story. Even if you don't teach social studies or ELA or you know something like that, even if you're a math teacher or something, you can, if you've got word problems, make sure the names in those word problems are names that are relevant to the students in your class. Not necessarily using the same names as the students in your class, but the idea that you know we are trying to match the area that we're teaching in and the students we're teaching and help them feel part of this and not like it's something different. Beyond those things, there's also specific activities that you can do to help build this classroom community. And we have eight different activities 
ideas to talk about here that you might find helpful. Our first of which can be used by any subject, any teacher, and that's questions of the day. A question of the day is a fun get to know you activity that is a little bit of each day throughout the entire school year or as long as you want to do it. I would pose this question at the start of class and then it would be fun to hear you know, student responses. I never pressured anyone to share. I know that it can depend upon the size of your class and how you want to do it, but it was just a fun little added discussion at the beginning of class and it gives students the chance to not only think about these topics and get to know their other fellow classmates, but also again to just start class with some of that, you know, easygoing conversation and keep conversation going. So that one you can either use like on a slideshow if you want to put it like on your bell work or um, present it when kids are walking in the class. You could also use the printable version. There's little cards so you could cut the cards up and draw one from the stack for the question of the day. So lots of flexibility, but it's definitely a really fun activity to try and just takes like a minute each day, but can prioritize that community aspect. There's plenty of different back to school icebreakers that people can use to build community, but a more extensive one that we have done is the what's in your backpack collage or the travel themed version, what's in your suitcase collage. And these are both uh, linked below in the description field as well as anything else I'm talking about. And the idea is students are creating a collage with digital images and some text about the things that they carry around in their metaphorical backpack. We all have different experiences that shape us and different, you know, aspects of our personality and identity that we kind of carry around with us in this, you know, imaginary backpack. And this collage is a great way for students to unpack these topics and represent them in image form. So it could be things like interests of theirs or favorite hobbies. It could be parts about their past or their identity. It could be things about their goals for the future or who they are as a student just mindset things. There's a lot of different approaches and we've got plenty of examples in the resources, but this is a really nice, more substantial get to know you activity that you can do. It is all digital as well. So that can be, that can be a perk if you've got, you know, device access with your students and you know, you could have students present these or these can just be meaningful for you to learn a little bit more about your students. Likewise, we've got a student interest inventory, which works great if you are trying to get to know your students better. I would do this the very first day of school with all my students just to start collecting this information. And I like using a Google form because some of the questions I want to look at whole data just to see where students are at overall on a couple of the questions. But then it's also nice because I have access to those whenever. And there's certainly a lot you can get to know at the start of the year, but I also like to refer back to them a couple months into the school year once I've already built a relationship with each student, because then you remember things better at that point. You're like, oh, I didn't know this, or maybe you had forgotten it as you were reading through things. So it's nice to be able to have those referring back to without needing a paper copy. For all of our social studies teachers out there, we've got a fun first day sort of bingo style activity where there's lots of different prompts um, about what kids may know or may have done related to US history, ancient civ, or world geography. It's a fun chance for students to not only interact with each other, but also with you. And honestly, this was a great way for me to practice names, uh, especially in those first few days of the school year. If you're a history teacher, you also might like our What is History resource. Now, the resource itself explains history and we broke it down into an acronym history standing for humanity, interpretation, stories, time, origins, records, and you. And we have an activity that connects to the you part, the history of you, where students are reflecting about these components of history as they pertain to them and their story, their life. So it's a way to help students understand history, but also showcase some of that within themselves. So that's a pretty cool um, option, especially if you are a history teacher or social studies teacher. This might seem pretty simple, but it still matters even at the secondary level, and that's celebrating birthdays. Now, 
if you're a middle school or high school teacher, you're probably not going to be, you know, singing and celebrating these birthdays, you know, the same way that an elementary teacher might be doing that. But kids do still appreciate the recognition, not necessarily public recognition, you know, everyone's different, but some sort of notice for their birthday. And something that was really fun to do was to actually give a birthday card that other students had signed uh, to each student for their birthday. Now this does require um, a little bit of extra work and preparation. So I had a classroom job specifically to help with that. And uh, there were a few classes where it didn't go as well uh, <laughs> with the birthday coordinator um, person, but several others who were very on top of it and helped make it, you know, very smooth uh, transition, you know, through the year. But basically I would have uh, a doc where all the kids had filled out their birthdays organized by month. This is again linked below. And then I purchased some birthday cards. I think I was able to get them mostly from Walmart for a very good price. I think it was like 12 cards in a pack for a dollar. So I bought cards for everyone um, in the grade there. And then students would like pri a couple days prior to the birthday would pass the card around and you know write a happy birthday or just basic message or sign it. And it was just a nice way to uh, be able to support you know, other students, and it was fun for a student to get that card uh, for their birthday. So that can be a nice idea if you're looking for something like that. Lastly, a couple other really quick activities. You can consider practicing daily gratitude with your students. We have a free resource linked in our TPT store that can help teach your students about what is gratitude and, you know, why they can practice it or what they can think about for like what they can be grateful for. But doing this was a helpful mindset shift. Obviously, practicing gratitude is not something that necessarily comes naturally or is regularly taught to people, but it can really reframe our perspective about things. And I like to think that us doing that for a year, basically at the start of class, having students in their bell work write down something they were grateful for. I like to think that practice then hopefully helps them recognize these things a little bit more in the future and shift perspective. Uh, so that's something that you can do. And also you learn about students and through the process of reflecting about gratitude, it can deepen the relationships between that class community, as well as sometimes people are sharing things that are a little bit more vulnerable. So that also can help build the relationships. Again, I never required kids to share what they were grateful for, but um, I usually had several students participate each day and share um, as we were going through it together. Lastly, um, if you are looking for something even just once a week, maybe do a little weekend update on Mondays and check in and see how people's weekends were. This is very simple to do. It doesn't really require any preparation. You may get some humorous or um, just different stories that students want to share. But again, whenever students feel like they can share and their ideas and stories are welcomed, it really changes the dynamic and improves the community experience for everyone. Let me know in the comments below if there's any that I missed or any of your other favorite classroom community building activities. And like I said, you can check out any of those links below that I mentioned today. You can also feel free to check out some of our other new teacher videos or back to school videos we've been doing and subscribe right up here if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.